Amen. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat at magandang gabi din sa mga nanonood. Uh, tayo magsisimula ng ating prayer meeting ngayong gabi. Awitin po natin ang hymn number 32, He Keeps Me Singing. Ang hymn number 32, He Keeps Me Singing. May mga hymnas po kayo, pwede po natin buksan. Hymn number 32. And the first time I out together now sing There's in my heart a melody Jesus whisper sweet and low For that I am with the peace be still And all life from heaven flow Chorus Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Feels my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Second All my life was worked by sin and strife Let's go fill my heart with pain Jesus wave across the broken string Sit us goes again Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, is my every longing, keeps me singing as I go, turn, feasting on the riches of His grace, resting, amen. Always looking on His smiling face That is why I shout and sing Chorus Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Kiss me singing as I go For Sansa Though sometimes he leaps to waters deep, try to spot the cross the way. Though sometimes the path seems strong and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Gives my every longing Gives me singing as I go Last answer Soon is coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall win my fight to worlds unknown I shall win with him on high Everybody, Taurus! Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Kiss my every longing, kiss me singing as I go. Amen. Tawagin po natin ang ating tagapagsalita ngayong gabi, preacher Jomar. Magandang gabi po sa lahat. Mangyari po na ating buksan ng ating mga Biblia sa libro po ng Malakay. Malakay chapter 1. At sundan niyo po ako sa pagbasa, babasahin ko po ang buong chapter. Malakay chapter 1. pa pa yan oh tumay po tayong lahat po sampo natin sa pababa ng middle tor andiyan na po sundan niyo po babasahin ko po from verse number 1 hanggang verse number 14 Palaks na lang konti. 
The burden of the word. Sino yun? Ha? I go. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, say the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein is thou love us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, say the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains in his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are improvised, but we will return and build in de the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation for ever. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted, polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. Contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Say the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons? Say the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, say the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place in, and in every place increase shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, say the Lord of hosts. But ye have profaned it. In that ye say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it, and ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought, brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick, the sea brought an offering. And I, should I accept it, should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord. Verse 14 altogether. But cursed be the deceiver which shot in his flock a male, and bow it, and sacrifice it unto the Lord, a corrupting. For I am a great king, say the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Father God in heaven, we come to you by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we ponder upon thy word, may you help us, Father. The Holy Spirit will guide us and give us wisdom and understanding, so we may have a right offering, right worship in front of you. We come, we come to thy throne of grace, Lord, boldly, and we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pagpalain po lahat ang mga nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos at makikinig at nakakaunawa nito. Ang ating pong pag-aaralan ay nasa libro po ng Malakay. Ang ibig sabihin po ng pangalang Malakay ay may messenger. That's why why some scholars uh, doubted that is it a name or is it just a my messenger? But um, a lot of scholars believe that it is a name. So it is a good name, no? My messenger. Malakay, he was so passionate about sincere worship of the Lord. Um, we, the book of Malachi only has four chapters, but it's all about right worship in the sight of God. And the Malachi missions was to correct the action and the attitude of the people of God, the Israelites, on that time. We need to take a look at the physical situation of um, the Israelites on that time. And as we go along in our study, 
nagsimula po tayo may preach from the book of Isaiah, Hosea last year. I, I, I don't know if you still remember that. But um, uh, tumalon-talon po tayo o nilakaran po natin yung mga books sa tinatawag po nating minor prophets at matatapos na po tayo. Dito na po tayo sa book of Malachi. And we know that post-exilic prophets is the last three books in the Old Testament, Testament which is Zechariah, Zebaniah, and Malachi. And on the time, you know, when we say post-exilic, sila po ay nakarating na sa tinatawag na galing sa pagkaalipin mula sa Babylonia. I hope and I pray you still understand and you still remember our study. The physical situation of the Israel at that time was uh, Jerusalem on the southern kingdom is rebuilt and full of people. 200 people na nadala time of Jeremiah in Babylonian at nakabalik. Uh, it just uh, 25%, uh, 50,000 50, people. That's still a lot. And also we know that the walls rebuilt were rebuilt because they were challenged. They were challenged by Ezra, by Nehemiah, and their houses were built. You see in the book of Haggai, inuna nga nila yung bahay nila kaysa sa templo ng Panginoon. Then Sepaniah, Zechariah comes. And then the temple had been working for nearly 100 years. So in physical situation, napakaganda na ng, uh, it seems na compare sa Babylonian captivity no and in the book of lamentations the bible describe that because of their hunger pati yung baby nila kinakain nila they're sobbing their babies pinapakuluan tas yun yung kinakain nila sa sobrang gutom so compared to that time compared to that situation in the time of Malachi seems na medyo okay but the spiritual situation of God's people, the Jews had lost their excitement for the Lord. Do you hear me? The Jews lost their excitement for the Lord. It seems that you're not excited to hear the message of the Lord. Do you hear me? Say amen. <laughs> At ganun din yung nangyayari po sa karamihan sa ating mga mananampalataya. The leaders of the church or the leaders of the temple, the priesthood, na sila dapat yung nangunguna, had slipped into corruption and apathy. There are a lot of sin that encompasses in their time. We see uh, mixed marriages, neglect of tithing, disregard of keeping Sabbath, corruption and priesthood, and social injustices, etc., etc., Kaya makikita mo, no, si Prophet Ezra, if I'm not mistaken, sabi niya, i-divorce niya yan. Oy, propeta, nagutos ng divorce. Kasi yung mga Moabites, yung mga uh, heathens, Gentiles, yung mga Israelita na nagpakasal doon sa mga Gentiles, heathen nation, mas, magan mas sin sinabi ni nung propetang ito na, mas maganda, i-divorce niya yan kaysa magpatuloy pa kayo. People brought wrong sacrifices and what the priest did, the priest accept it. They just approve it anyway. Tithes were neglected, divorce was common um, to the point that divorce, not, not just for any biblical reason, but para hiwalay nilang asawa nila para makapag-asawa pa sila ulit para sa kanilang sariling laman. And people didn't see themselves as doing anything wrong. Yun yung mahirap. Kaya yung kasalanan ng mga tao sa Biblia, ganun din yung kasalanan natin ngayon. Wala naman akong ginagawang masama. Hindi naman nakasulat sa Biblia na masama magsigarilyo. Hindi naman nakasulat sa Biblia na masama ang alak. That's the problem. We sometimes did it, didn't see ourselves as doing anything wrong. And Prophet Malachi pointed these things out and instructed the people 
to get their attitudes and action right with the Lord. The message of Prophet Malachi seven times make a statement about a sin problem. That's why meron tayong the title of this message is God's respond on our in our lives objections. There are seven or more than seven eight statement, but seven lang yung tatalakay natin. Seven statements of God, but here comes merong objection ng Panginoon. And then God said, no, you're wrong. This is the fruit. Each time the people object to Malachi's statement when God said, hey people, I love you. But the people says, saan nyo ako minahal? Lord, anong, papaan nyo ako minahal? When God says something, when the prophet of God says something, they always reject or they will always object. So God need to respond. And we can see seven objections of Israel in, this, in, in our book. In what way have you loved us? In what way have we despised your name? And in what way have we defied you? It is found in only chapter 1. Chapter 2, in what way have we wearied him? Chapter 3, in what way shall we return? In what way shall we rob you? That's why makikita natin dito yung favorite natin, verse Malachi 3.10. And what have we spoken against you in chapter 3, verse number 13. But we will just tackle three objections of the people of Israel in this time. So God is going to respond in their objection. Hindi na po tayo magtatagal. Verse number 1 to verse number 5. We can see here the first objection and the, the first statement of God and His objection and His fruit of His statement. So, di, ganito magpa-process yung ating outline. This is the statement of God, but they will object, objection, objection or honor, and then, no, you're wrong. This is the fruit. Number one, the people of Israel, number one objection is, wherein has thou loved us? Verse number one, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? God says to his people, I love you. I love you. And when, and when we say love, when God says love, it's not just a past tense. It affects, the effects is continuous still on today. This past, present, and future. Because the Lord's love for His people is unchanging because He is unchanging God. In verse number 6 of chapter 3, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Sinabi ng Panginoong makapangyarihan, Ako ang Panginoon ay hindi nagbabago, kaya kayong mga lahi ni Jacob ay hindi lubusang nalilipol. Now, why would God state this? Why would the prophet of God have to say this thing? Bakit kailangan palagi tayong palalahanan ng salita ng Diyos? Palalahanan ng mga mga ngaral na mahal tayo ng ating Panginoon. One of the reasons because the people is almost forgotten the love of God. The Israelites had forgotten that God loves them. Maybe the un another reason is the people didn't believe it anymore. That's why they object God. Ganon din po sa atin, mga kapatid. Sometimes, we forgot that you are a child of a king. Not just a king, but king of kings and lord of lords. And the people of this world is just the people of the devil. And you are the sons of the king. Tayo po ay mga sindero, tagapagmana. Or you don't forget it, but sometimes we don't believe it anymore. That's why they object in verse number 2. They said, Wherein hast thou loved us? Lord, saan nyo ba kami ni mahal? Minahal. Diba? Look, at, look, at, look at the words here. Yet ye say, ngunit sinasabi nyo, Wherein hast thou loved us? Now, 
Can God's people ever get to the point where they question God's love for them? That's a question for us. Can we as God's people question the love of God for us? Because we people have short memories. Sometimes trials can cause people to forget God's blessing, to forget God's love. We people don't just have short memories, but also we are impatient. We expect God to fix everything now, and when He doesn't meet their time, our timing, we blame God. Lord, you love me? You say you love me? Pero bakit ganito nangyayari sa buhay ko? Lord, bakit hindi mo binigay nung kailangan, kailangan na kailangan ko? Bakit? Wala! Lord, Ikaw ang may dahilan. Ikaw ang dapat sisihin. We are so impatient to the point that we're asking God, Lord, have, wherein has you loved me? Israel was back in the land, but their kingdom was not reestablished and the Messiah was nowhere to be found. The prophet is telling them, the prophet told them, Hey, may dadating na isang tao mula sa lipi ni David at lahat ng mga bansa Siya yung magpapalaya sa inyo. Okay, we're in our land. We have the temple. We have a good houses. But where is the Messiah? They are not living the successful Jewish dream they had been told about. That's why in the millennium, kim, millennial kingdom, dun po lahat mangyayari, lahat ng inaasam-asam nila. In their time, they were still having to deal with their enemies even though they have this uh, kalayaan. Now, God says, I love you. God is telling you, I love you. Yet we say, wherein thou hast loved us. This is the proof of God. God gave us historical proof. In this passage, God gave us a historical proof and it is the story of Jacob and Esau. Verse number 2. Was not Esau Jacob's brother Say the Lord, yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, or I did not choose Esau, I reject Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage ways for the dragons of the wilderness. Nung nakaraan kasi, binabasa ko to. Ganun kasi pag mag-preach ka. Basa-basahin mo. Nung nakaraan linggo, binabasa ko pa to. Try to read it, read it loud, preacher. So, malalaman mo yung mga pronunciations na hindi mo sure. So, nagbabasa ko. Sabi ko, dito. Uh, and I hated Iso and laid these mountains. And nandun si Charity. Sabi niya, mountains? Ito na yung nakakatawa. Any heritage wish for the dragons of the wilderness. Dragons? <laughs> Ang cute, no? Sabi ko, hala, paano ko pala ipapaliwanag kay Charity, no? Wow, dragons. May napapanood niya sa YouTube, no? Ano lang yun? Uh, commercial lang yun, commercial. Naalala ko lang si Charity. God gave us historical proof. The correct interpretation of love here should be choose. Okay? Contextually, God choose Jacob. Yung kanyang lipi. Hindi po yung lipi ni Iso. Jacob and Iso were brothers, yet God chose Jacob to be his people. God did not choose Iso to be people from whom the Savior of the world would come. Yung sino magtatamasa ng tinatawag na Abraham blessing, hindi po sa lipi ni Iso, but God choose Jacob. And Israel, like us, didn't do anything to deserve God's love. Kung isipin mo, kung kukumpare mo yung ugali ni Iso, tsaka yung ugali ni Jacob, mas masawal pa yung ugali ni Jacob. Why? He's a deceiver. So, the people of God, the Israelites, doesn't deserve the love of God. They don't do anything to deserve God's love. This wasn't just like we as Filipino called it, utang na loob. This was the true love from God toward man. Side note, my brother and sister in Christ, we should not, we should not use this passage as a sortoriological passage. This choosing has nothing to do with our salvation. 
This is an historical proof that God chose Jacob rather than Esau. The Edomite, the Edomites, the Edom could get saved just like the Jews could. God is simply contrasting here the history of two nations. Now, nasan na po yung bansa? Nasaan na po yung bansang Edom ngayon? Yung lipi ni Ezo, wala na po mga kapatid. Edom, Edom, God promised in His Word in the book of Obadiah okay, and some prophets that they will not rebuild. God shows He still loves Israel because they are still around. Hey, where are the Edomites? Nasaan na yung kanilang bansa? Nasaan ka na kanilang yung pinagmamalaki nilang mga, mga bahay dun sa cliff? Yung kanilang yaman? Nasaan na? Wala na. Pero kayo are still existing even though Assyrians, Babylonians, um, um, Assyrians, Babylonians, and then Persians came. You still exist. God has shown Israel grace and mercy. Now, if I will ask you, what is the proof of God's love to you? Or let's change the question. Who is the proof of God's love to you? It is found in this name, Jesus. Don't ever tell God, don't ever say to God, Lord, hindi mo ata ako mahal eh. Kasi bakit ganito yung nangyayari sa buhay ko? Lord, mahal mo ba ako? Naiintindihan mo ba yung nararamdaman ko ngayon? Remember what Christ did on the cross. His person and His work. What do you mean, bro? Kapatid, Diyos na banal. Diyos na dakila. Diyos na gumawa ang lahat. Bumaba sa lupa. Di ba? Namuhay ng perfecto. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang talikuran. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang buhay. Ibinigay niya ang lahat. Not just physically, but when God say, when Jesus said, Ilay, Ilay, Lama Sabachani, that's the time that the sin of the whole world was passed on, was imputed to Jesus Christ. And that's the very time, di ba? In eternity past, na nahiwalay ang anak sa ama because of the sin of the world. So don't ever tell God, don't ever have these thoughts parang wala namang pakialam sa akin ng Panginoon. God still loves you even you don't believe it. Jesus, what a humble person, what a humble God. Meron akong pinanood kagabi na movie sa YouTube. Ano yun? Christian movie channel. Subscribe nyo yun, ano? Andun din mo matatagpuan yung Amazing Love ni Prophet Hosea yung pinanood dati dati so ang pamagat nung ang pamagat nung title <laughs> pamagat nung title joke lang yun joke lang ang pamagat nung movie ay remember the goal merong isang ang ganda kasi merong um, yung pinaka coach nagkwento siya ng isang story sabi niya nung si Jesus Christ Papagalingan niya yung anak ni Jairus na 12 years old. Pinagtawanan siya ng mga tao eh. Pero nung napagaling niya, ang sabi niya, huwag niyo sasabihin ha. Eh, eh, hindi siya yung ano, hindi siya, oh, anong tatawa-tawa niyo? Anong tatawa-tawa niyo? Ha? Pagaling ko, oh, tingnan niyo. Oh. Hindi. So dun sa movie, nung nanalo na sila sa takbuhan, biglang nawala yung coach. Kasi ayaw niyang ma-receive yung glory. Gusto niya sa Panginoon. Jesus Christ is the proof that God loves you. Not just you're just eating three times a day or you have new clothes or whatever. Looking unto Jesus. Realize what He has done for you. He so loves you. He knows everything. God said in His Word, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. When God will start 
time. We know God is not bound by time. That's why 1,000 years to Him is just one day and one day to 1,000. It means He is not bound by time. So if you, you could just imagine the Father, nag-uusap sila, no, yung Trinity, ito yung, gag- ito yung plano ko. Pero mamamatay ka. Willing ka ba? Imagine that you are so loved by God. So kahit anong sitwasyon sa buhay mo, don't ever, ever, ever think that God doesn't love you anymore. Mahal ka ng Panginoon. Don't ever doubt God's love like the people of Israel. Next thing is, second objection. Second statement of God and second object- objection of the people of Israel. Hanggang, hanggang dito lang tayo. Pero hanggang dito lang, pero isang chapter, no? Kaya mag-alala, ano, 737, 8 o'clock, tapos tayo. Amen? Kira. Now, from verse number 6 to verse number 14, God now addressed the priest. No, hindi mo pwedeng sab- hindi niya in-address dito yung mga libita, no? Hindi yung mga libita lang, but yung mga pinakapare. We know, mayroong tatlong napaka-importanting personalidad o titulo in their time, or office in their time, king, priest, and prophets. King, sa ekonomiya, prophets, God's mouthpiece, priest, yung sa worship sa templo. The responsibility of the priest was offering sacrifices to our great God. The priests were to help people to reconcile with God kapag ikaw nagkaroon ka ng kasalanan in their time. So by faith, you will produce these sacrifices upang ma-reconcile ka sa Panginoon. Upang yung kasalanan mo, yung rat ng Panginoon na dapat mapunta sa'yo, mapupunta dun sa sacrifices mo. That's their, that's their work. They were to help them worship God. Because they can have they cannot have true worship without reconciling first to God. The sacrifices we know in the Bible were a future sac- perfect sacrifice of Christ. In verse number 6, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is it mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts. O priest, that despised my name, and ye say, the second objection is, wherein have we despised thy name? The statement of God, hey, my name should be honored. God state an illustration, a father and a son. A son should honor his father. The Israelite, as a children of God, should honor God as their father. But they are accused of not honoring God like a child should honor his father. Second, not just son and a father, but a servant to master. A servant should fear his master. But the people of God in this time did not fear God. They disrespect God. They did not honor God. And yet, their objection is, And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? And this is the proof of God. In verse number 7, Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. You know, the mean, what is the Tagalog translation of Google Translate in contemptible is kasuklam-suklam. Ang aking habag ay kasuklam-suklam. The priest offered polluted, unholy, improper sacrifices. Nilapas tangan ninyo ang ako sa pamamagitan ng paghahandog ng maruruming handog sa aking altar. Pero nagtanong pa kayo, paano naging marumi ang aming handog? Naging marumi ang inyong handog dahil sinasabi ninyo na walang kabuluhan ng aking altar o kasuklam-suklam ang altar ng Panginoon. They were rejected by God. That sacrifice should not be accepted. But they offered it anyway. Parang the story of Cain and Abel. They didn't view the sacrifices as being important. May I repeat that? The priests in their time didn't view the sacrifices as being important. As sacrifices as, as 
a picture of their pure worship. Now in our time, our prayer, our worship, our singing, and all of those stuff that we're doing in our public worship service. Tingin mo, magsisimba ka, wala kang dalang Biblia. Is that true worship? Mag-iglesia ka na lang ni Kristo. You know what I'm saying? Kanonood nung ano, kanonood nung sa Yesi is. Sa, sa CCF kasi meron silang evangelical, ano yung pangalan Yesi is. So meron isang uh, brother doon na lagi niyang sinasabi, you know what I'm saying? Where is the true worshiper today? Nasaan ang mga totoong kristyano ngayon? Na kahit, di ba? Is that true sacrifices to God? Those stuff, those things that we're doing here, we're not just doing our best. To the priest, it didn't matter what kind of sacrifices they offered. Kung blemish ba or perfect, Walang pakialam sila. They just offer it. Kaya you don't say in, the, in, in this stage, in this altar, mga kapatid, huwag nyo nalang pansinin ang, min, ang uh, tono. Minsahe na lang. Kakanta ka sa Panginoon, hindi mo pinagandaan. Mga ngaral ka ng salita ng Diyos, hindi mo pinagandaan. Magkakandak ka, magsosunglid ka, hindi mo pinagandaan. It is like a polluted sacrifices. It is nothing in sight of God. It is wrong when we do less than our best for the Lord. Now, what does that say about when we think of the Lord who gave us our money, our talents, and our time? He is the Lord of all. He's the King of Kings, but we're not doing our best to Him, for Him. In verse number 8, look at, uh, look at the figure of speech or look at the illustration that God gave here. And if ye offer, verse 8, the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, it is not evil. Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, say the Lord of hosts? Kaya hinandugan niyo ako ng mga hayop na bulag, pilay o may sakit. Now, in their time, the Israelites, the priests, lalo na itong mga pare, alam nila kung ano yung dapat ihandog sa Panginoon. Perfecto, the best of best. The best among the crops. Male without blemish, without spot. Hindi bulag, hindi bingi. Oh, hindi bingi. Walang kapansanan. Para kasi sabihin niyo, paano mo malalaman pag bingi yung tupa eh? Sa tao, malalaman mo pag bingi yung tao. Pag sinabi mo, bingi ka ba? Pag ang sagot niya, ha? <laughs> bingi nga yun. God said, hindi po yan tama. Ganyan kaya ang ihandog nyo sa inyong gobernador. At tignan nyo kung matutuwa at malulugod sa inyo. Kapag aharap ka sa barangay captain, maliligo ka, magbibihis ka. Lalo na pag aharap ka siguro sa senador, sa presidente, Pero pagharap ka sa Panginoon, okay na kahit hindi nakaplansya. Okay na kahit hindi disente. Now, don't tell me, no, oh, no, kasi, ano, Americanize yung ano natin, worship natin, kasi ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Mga kapatid, di ba? Titingin mo, nasa disente ka ng panahon. Kahit yung mga hindi mananampalataya, kahit yung mga kulto, alam nila kung ano yung lugar na dapat disente ka. So don't tell me that reasoning. Eh, Americanized worship kasi yung simbahan natin. Kaya okay lang nakasado. Okay lang lahat. Okay lang lahat. Sige nga. Humarap tayo sa matataas na tao sa mundong ito. Inaayos natin ang sarili natin. Pero pag humarap tayo sa Panginoon, hindi natin inaayos yung sarili natin inwardly and outwardly. 
For example, it is okay to be late in the church kesa malate sa trabaho. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Okay lang malate sa church, wag lang sa trabaho kasi may kaltas. Eh kung kaltasan kaya ng Panginoon yung hangin na, ina, na, ina, na nilalanghap natin, hindi na natin kailangan magdanas ng ganun kapatid na maghahabal tayo ng hininga para ma-realize natin na mali yung ating practice. Kaya hindi mo masisisi yung ibang mga simbahan. Kapag Sunday school na late ka, antayin mo na yung morning worship service. Doon ka na lang sa labas. Kasi, imaginein mo, kung ang, kung ang chapel nyo ay close na close, tapos air-conized, air-conized, may ganun bang word? Air-con, ano? Tapos kahit may nagkwento sa akin, pastor, doon daw sa simbahan, mother church niya, pag nalaglag yung ballpen, patatawag ka sa ano, office ng pastor. Kasi maingay. Imagine mo, no, close na close yung church. Kahit tunog ng electric pan, di mo maririnig. Kahit bagsak ng ballpen, maririnig mo. Tapos biglang Sunday school nyo, 10 o'clock. Matutuwa ba yung mga ngaral? Matutuwa ba yung mga member? Kapag yung mga mananta palataya, kapag every 5 minutes may pumapasok, pasok. 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 Think of that, my brother and sister in Christ. Hindi, okay, brother Jomar, it's better to be late than never. Oh, nandun na tayo. But, we're not just giving our best to the Lord. Sa mga nakikinig po natin sa online, we're not just giving our best to the Lord. Sabi ni Kuya Elijah Abanto, yung sa CPA, Readers Group, Digest Group, sabi niya, partial service is a crime. You're not just giving your best to the Lord. And it counts for nothing, my brother. How is that type of behavior appropriate for the kings of kings if it isn't even acceptable for you, man? Kung sa tao nga, hindi karap. Di ba? Sa iba nga, pag may mga social gatherings, well-prepared, ganto-ganyan, ang ganda. Pero pag para sa Panginoon, we're not just giving our best to the Lord. In verse number 9, and now I pray you, beseech, beseech God that He will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will He regard your persons? Say the Lord of hosts. Kayo mga pare, hilingin nyo sa Diyos na kawaan niya tayo. Pero sa ganyang klaseng mga inahandog nyo sa Kanya, sa mga ganyang klaseng ugali natin, tiyak na hindi niya tayo kalulugdan. Yan ang sabi ng makapangyarihang Panginoon. In verse number 10, this is heartbreaking. Mark, mark your Bible. Get ready. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. May isa sana sa inyong mga pari na magsara ng mga pintuan ng aking templo upang hindi na kayo makapagsindi ng walang kabuluhang apoy sa aking altar. Hindi ko tatanggapin ng inyong mga handog dahil hindi ako nalulugod sa inyo. The sacrificers were not doing anything. They were just, they were in vain. In fact, they were doing more harm than good. That's why God said, Mas maganda, mapasara na lang. Meron ba sa isa sa inyo? Para hindi na magsunog. Hindi na mag-offer. Worship is useless if there is no heart behind it. If we are not acceptable, our worship will not be acceptable. Ang ganda ng boses mo. Ang ganda ng awit mo. Pero yung puso mo, inayos mo ba sa Panginoon? You should be reconciled to God first. Then your service, then your worship. 
Not everything that is offered to God as worship is accepted by God as worship. May I repeat that? Not everything that is offered to God as worship is accepted by God as worship. Hindi ibig sabihin nagpunta ka ng simbahan. Tapos na yun. Nalugod mo na ang Panginoon. Pero kung ang puso mo naman, ang isip mo at ang kaluluwa mo at ang buong ikaw ay hindi tama sa Panginoon. Now, what what is the word of God telling us? It is for nothing. Oh, Brother Jomar, that is in the Old Testament. We are living now in New Dispensation. You don't really understand the Bible. You don't really understand the character of God. Sa, sa Old Testament, dapat 100% ang paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Sa atin sa New Testament, 50% na lang, okay na kay Lord. In verse number 11, we see here the prophecy about all the Gentiles. Okay, the whole world will honor God. Diba? For the rising of the sun, even to the going to the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered unto my name, and of your offering, for my name shall be great among heathen, say the Lord of hosts. Diba? Sabi pa ng teacher ko, how ironic. Yung mga hudyo, ang tingin nila sa mga hindi, napakadudumi. Pero ang sabi dito ng Panginoon, itong mga madudumi na itinuturing nyo, sila yung magbibigay sa akin ng totoong pag, pagsamba. Now, in verse number 13, mga kapatid, He said also, uh, verse 12, But ye have propane it, in that ye say, the table of the Lord is polluted, and the food thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Pero kayo, nilapastangan ninyo ako. Dahil sinasabi ninyong marumi ang aking altar at walang kabulaan ang inihandog doon. Now, look, my brother and sister in Christ, may our worship should be right worship in the sight of God. How come? Ayusin po natin yung sarili natin sa Panginoon. Verse number 13. Ito po yung masakit. He said also, Behold, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn in the lame, in the sick. The sea brought an offering, should they accept this of your hand, said the Lord. Sinabi pa ninyo na nagsasawa na kayo sa paghahandog at binabalewala ninyo ang aking altar. Sometimes, we as a Christian, our worship becoming routine and tiresome. Weariness. Weariness, Tagalog yung stagnant. Nagsasawa na. Wala nang tamis. Wala nang alat. Wala nang asin. Wala nang lasa. Kaya hindi natin, hindi na po tayo dapat magulat na sa panahon natin ngayon, napakaraming mga kristyano, peking, peking, may peking pagsisimba. Totoong niligtas ng Panginoon, pero peke ang pagsisimba. Pwede ba yun? Oo. Oh, di pa yun sa Biblia. Karnal. Totoong ligtas, peke ang paglilingkod. Bakit? Nagsawa na eh. Ay, kasi naman yung mga preacher, kakaanto. Ay, kasi naman yung preacher, mali-mali yung English. Ay, kasi naman, ang haba-haba. Nakakaanto kasi hindi mo inintindi. Ang haba-haba, eh paano? Eternity tayo mag-spend, mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Because to know God it requires eternity. Baka hindi po tayo ligtas. E paano kasi nakaka-discarried sa church? Lagi na lang naka-yellow. Ayoko nga kay Lenny. Diba? Hindi <laughs> tayo mag-usap ng politika dito. Hindi tayo katulad ng mga black system na pag... Kung Lenny kayo, ako pakyaw, walang problema doon. Individual so liberty nga eh. Kasi ninis ako ay brother. 
Eh kasi, hadis ka. Looking unto Jesus. That's lucky mga kapatid. Siguro maganda i-topic natin yung sayang people, yung ano yun. Sawa ka na ba? Tanong yung sarili mo. <laughs> Sawa ka na ba? Minsan nasabi ko sa isang pangangaral na nakikita mo ba yung sarili mo sa lokal na iglesia nito na dito ka tatanda. Kung dito ka makakapangasawa, no? O kung dito ka, hindi ka magmamigrate. Nakikita mo ba yung sarili mo na 40 years old ka na, nag ka pa din ng upuan, naglilinis ka pa din, naglilingkod ka pa din, nagtuturo ka pa din, nagmamap ka pa din. Yung mga usual mo ginagawa ngayon, magbago man yan, mag-level up man yan. Pero nakikita mo ba yung sarili mo na magpapatuloy ka pa ba sa Panginoon? Nadadating mga kapatid, yung magsasawa ka na. Pero mapalalahanan tayo ng salita ng Diyos. Bakit ka nagsasawa? Nakakalimutan mo yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Yung ginawa niya para sa'yo. Yung katotohanan ng kanyang salita. That all of your doings is in vain under the sun. Our life is for the Lord. In verse number 14. But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his pluck a male and vow it and sacrifice it unto the Lord, corrupting, for I am a great king, say the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. What is the wording here? Cursed! Sumpain! Sumpain ko ang mga mandaraya sa inyo na nga ako maghahandog ng pinakamabuting flak, pinakamabuting hayo, pinakamabuting tupa, pero ang inahandog ay ang may mga kapintasan. That is being hypocritic, mga kapatid. Ah, hypocritic. Hypocritical. Hypocrites. Mga nga ako ka sa Panginoon, Lord, pag yumaman ako, bibili ako ng church property. Ganyan-ganyan. Lord, bibigay ko yung, alam mo na, Basta pag mo to, ang dami mong pangako sa Panginoon. Kaya ngayon din natin din nagamit yung word na promises. Mas maganda yung word na commitment. Mga kapatid, God is telling us in verse number 10, I have no pleasure in you. Sa tingin mo, natutuwa pa sa atin ng Panginoon? kung yung ginagawa natin sa Kanya ay hindi tama. Bakit hindi tama yung ginagawa natin sa Kanya? Kasi hindi tama yung sarili natin. Pag tama yung puso mo, tama yung gagawin mo sa Kanya. God doesn't want our 99.9 worship. God doesn't. God wants your 100%. So don't object God because He has this truth he has this proof. He has this response. No, yun, you're wrong. Don't tell me that I don't love you. Mahal kita. Namatay ako para sa'yo. Don't tell me na tama yung worship mo. Don't tell me na na-honor mo yung... Uh, don't tell me na tama lahat yung worship mo. Look at your action. Look at your words. Look at your attitude. Look at your action. Sometimes, ginagawa natin, hindi, lahat naman tayo may flaws eh. Lahat naman tayo may attitude. Eto na ako, eto na yun. Hindi na yun mababago. Hindi ako kakayanin ng Holy Spirit. Mm. Sabi, pati Holy Spirit, hindi na daw siya kakayanin eh. No. Sabi ng Romans chapter, sabi sa, in the book of Romans, naging kawangis tayo ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. Perfect. Complete. Now, last question is this. Kamusta po tayo sa Panginoon? Kamusta ka kay Lord? Yun po yung tanong. Kamusta yung worship mo kay Lord? Ang unang tanong, kamusta ka? Kamusta ka sa Panginoon? 
Ikalawang tanong, kamusta yung ginagawa mo sa Panginoon? The second question doesn't matter if you don't answer the first question. God so loved us. He gave His life for us. And God is telling us, My son, my daughter, I am worthy of all adoration. I am worthy of all your worship. I am worthy of all your honor. Serve me right. Because half service is a crime. I have no pleasure. I have no pleasure in that. I have no pleasure in that. To die in that, I have no pleasure in you. Kaya yung mga tinatago po natin kasalanan, meron, meron tayo niyan. Pero mga kapatid, isuko mo yan sa Panginoon. If you are addicted to porn, tell it to God, Lord, this is wrong. Lord, help me. Kung meron ka ng girlfriend, boyfriend, pero nagkakakrush ka pa rin sa iba, meron ka ng boyfriend, pero puro picture pa ng K-pop, yung minamayday mo, profile mo, that is deceiving yourself. Picture pa ni Daniel Padilla, no, niloloko mo lang sarili mo. Give it to God. Ibigay po natin lahat sa Panginoon. He can fix us. He can mold us. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, sa first chapter po ng Malakay. We understand that you love us with an everlasting love. Mahal niyo po kami, Panginoon. No doubt, no doubt with that. Sapagkat ibinigay niyo po si Kristo na siya pong namuhay na walang kasalanan. Diyos na numikha ng bag, lahat ng bagay, ngunit namatay po sa aming mga kasalanan. Binayara niya ang aming mga kasalanan. At kadalasan, naralimutan po natin, namin, Panginoon, yung ginawa po ng inyong anak na si Jesus, na siya po ang pinaka-fruit that you really love us. He died for us. Kaya Panginoon, naniniwala po kami na mahal niyo po kami. And Lord, because of that, naalay po namin ang lahat ng kapurihan, lahat ng uh, kapurihan, Panginoon, our adoration, worship, and praise to you. Lord, nawa, gawin po namin yung best namin sa inyo. Hindi lang po yung aming 50%, 80%. Hindi lang po yung okay na yan, pwede na yan, nawa po yung best po para sa inyo. Maayos po namin yung aming sarili sa inyo at maayos din po namin yung service namin sa inyo, Panginoon. We love you, Lord, and then also we thank you, Lord, sa amin pong online service sa kanila mga tahanan na kaabot namin sa akin ito. Sa mga kapatid po namin na naririto, Panginoon, bless us, Lord, at patuloy po namin inalalapit at tinadalangin po sa inyo ang aming pastor, Pastor Bong Alcala. Siya po ay inyo pong pagalangin, ingatan ka yan, at ang mga gamot na kanyang tinitake, gamitin niyo, Lord, upang uh, masugpo po ang sakit na kanyang na dinarama. Dalangin ko po na ang mga kapatid ay lumapit sa inyo, Panginoon, at umiyak sa inyo, Panginoon, palagi, sapagkat kailangan po namin kayo, Ama, in every minute of our life. At salamat din po sa uh, uh, mga pagpapala na hindi po namin nanonotice. At magbigay po tayo, mga kapatid, ng uh, Ilang sandali upang mag-reflect po sa mensahe at kausapin po ang Panginoon. Lord God, we thank you po na po magpatuloy po ang aming gawain. Bless nyo po ang aming daily devotions. Pigyan kami ng malakas ng internet. At bless nyo rin po ang aming uh, tithes and offering tonight, Lord. 
patuloy niyo pong gamitin ng bawat isa sa amin maging daloy ng pagpapala. Ingatan niyo po kami sa amin pagsamantalang pag-iulayin. And all these things we ask in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we give and as we close, let's call our song leader. Let's sing Trust and Obey on hymn number 38. Amen. Let's all stand up and let's sing Trust and Obey on hymn number 38. Para po sa ating pagtatapos, tayo po yung mawit sa Panginoon. Awitin po natin. Hymn number 38, Trust and Obey. For sons out together now sing When we walk with the Lord In the light of His Word What a glory we share on in our reign While we do His good will He abides with us still And with all who will trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy with Jesus, but to trust and obey. Second, not a shot, but to trust and obey. For Sansa, we never can prove the delight of His love. Until all the doubts are relayed For the favor He shows And the joy He bestows Are for them who will trust and obey Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy with Jesus, but to trust and obey. Last answer. And in fellowship sweet, will we sit at His feet, or will walk by His side in the way? What is it we will do? Where we stand, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy with Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Maraming salamat po at tapos na po ang ating prayer meeting. God bless us all.